of what is happening in the moment. And I first heard about Cliff in June of 2001 when I got an email from a wacky friend of mine. I guess all my friends are wacky. Uh, a friend of mine who said, look at this. So I read it, and I read about the program. I said, it seemed kind of interesting. And then he said, here's what I'm reading. I'm reading that in the late summer... Uh, here's the emotional words I'm reading. Um, High-rise buildings, airplanes, bombs, terrorists, many die. So I thought, wow, I wonder what that means. So, you know, I put it aside, and then 911 happened. So now I was paying attention to this guy. So in, in 2005, he came out with the next alert, and he said, flood, southern city, many die, uh, big storm, high winds. So I said, okay, and then Katrina happened. So now I've got his stuff on my wall, and I'm, you know, I'm watching him now. So he's been right about 20 straight times in little ways. But about a year ago, he came up and he said, I'm getting the biggest reading ever. And it's saying October 6, 2009, or 2008. So, you know, I put it on my wall, and every, all my friends are watching Cliff and seeing what's going to happen in the world. And, um, and that's just, that was the height of the, of the crash, that October 6 was the height when we were at the worst. So now... Everybody in the know, and you guys are now in the know, is paying attention to Cliff. We want to know what he's finding, right, in the next few years. And Cliff is a completely, totally cool guy. He did like Zazen on top of of, 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 of eight thousand foot mountain for a week straight, and he was, you know, he, he practiced, He's a he's a martial artist, and he, he's brilliant. And so um, he got on this radio show, a friend of mine's radio show, and, uh, and, and, he, and I, I kind of fed the questions to this guy. I said, you know, ask him this, and ask him that. So he asked him, he said, okay, so what's going to happen now? And he says, well, the next big date is uh, January 26, 2009, six days after the uh, um, president is now, uh, put into office. And, um, and he said, it's going to be a repercussion from what happened on October 6th. And then the guy says, okay, so what happens then? And he says, in summer of 2009, the United States, is, it looks like it's going to default on its, on its debt and, and declare bankruptcy. In 2010, the economy is going to get so bad. And then he stopped and he said, I don't really know how to say this because this is happening all over the world at the same time. It looks like there's going to be a worldwide revolution of, of, of uh, where at least 60 different countries, including us. And um, so now, you know, we're all sweating bullets listening to this guy. And I'm emailing the, the, D, the, the host, you know, ask him this, ask him this. And uh, so he says, okay, okay, uh, how far ahead can you project? And he says, well, I'm, I can project up to about 20. 12. And uh, he says, oh, come on, everybody's talking about 2012. Tell us about it. So he says, well, this is where things get really weird. He said, there's, go there's going to be this economic collapse, and then there's going to be what he can only refer to as a revolution. He doesn't really want to use that word because he says what I'm getting is not really a revolution. It's something else, like a, a, an evolution almost. And then he said, then he said but what's really crazy is... Is, and I know no one's going to believe this because it's only four years from now. But in four years, reading the emotional content of what people are saying, everyone is going to be returned to the country into tribal communities by 2012. And growing your own food is going to be 80% of the work that you do every day. And this is four years. So I'm going, wow, you know, this is really incredible. And, uh, it, and it goes right in with everything that, that the Mayans are saying and everyone else is saying. And it, it's incredible. So, but there's something else going on, which is really even more amazing. And, and it was like um, uh, Eric Gonzalez, the, the Mayan elder, he was talking about the, this is the beginning of the end of the fourth sun and the beginning of the fifth sun. And the cross of Hende uh, accentuates the sun. It has an angry sun on the facade. And so there's this strange sun motif that's going on in all these prophecies. And about four and a half months ago, for the first time, in recorded astronomical history, the sun lost its magnetic field, its heliosphere, it's called. Do you know what the heliosphere is? This is really cool. All right, so here's the sun. And the sun has an electromagnetic field around it. 
That's its heliosphere, okay? And we're here. We're here in the heliosphere. Here's the Earth, right? Here's Venus. Here's Mercury, right? We're actually in it. And this heliosphere is an electromagnetic field. And everything, in the, all of the gamma rays and synchrotron radiation that's coming from the center of the galaxy, by the way, is bouncing off this heliosphere and really not affecting us, okay? Because we have it. It's a protective layer that the sun has that keeps us safe from radiation. That heliosphere disappeared about four and a half months ago. There's only been one sunspot, and it was gone. Uh-oh. Hope I didn't screw this up. Oh, great. Now they're going to charge us for this one. Okay. Thank you very much, whoever gave me that. And um, anyway. Oh, I can get it off. Okay. So... Um, so the heliosphere has disappeared, and what's going on is all, uh, the, the Ulysses spacecraft, uh, NASA sent a, 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 a craft up called Ulysses a few years ago, and it registered the amount of particles coming into the solar system, and the particles were overwhelmingly coming into the solar system from the center of the galaxy. Um, and so right now we're being um, uh, just inundated with all sorts of things that have never in recorded history since Galileo. Um, have come in to the earth. I don't know what this means. I'm just telling you that it's a weird coincidence that, that all these things are happening at once. For the first time in recorded history, we don't have uh, uh, this protective layer around us. The sun is... is, is the, and the analogy that I use is that the uh, center of the galaxy is like the great goddess, and the sun is our protective father, and our protective father has kind of disappeared, and the information from the center of the galaxy is now getting through, which is eerily close to the Mayans' prophecies and their whole thing about the center of the galaxy lining up with the sun. And we don't know if any of this is actually a coincidence or what. We just know that it's happening. And, and so what, what is it, you know, that's going on here? And, 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 and it is a, an ecstatic event. And it's as and in alchemy, it's as above, so below. What happens in the heavens is reflected here on earth. What happens here on earth is reflected up in the heavens. So the heavens are are um, are, are, are are we've lost our protective layer. Uh, all sorts of knowledge, information, radiation. Things we've never measured. We can't even measure it because it's never happened before. It's coming in. We don't even know what kind of machines to build to measure it because it's never occurred. So we don't know what to do. The scientists are worried about it. If you read the journals, they're very worried about what's going on right now and think that all sorts of radiation is getting in right now, which it probably is. And if you um, are familiar with the work of John Jenkins, then you know that... Um, uh, 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 genetic mutation is frequently caused by these strange p power downs that the sun goes through. Okay, so the sun is powering down, and we don't know why, and we don't even know how long it'll last. Uh, the heliosphere has disappeared, uh, the, and, and down here on Earth, the markets are crashing. Um, we're on the edge of a famine. Uh, they're not here, but in India and China, and we have um, the greatest crisis in human history unfolding in front of us. And our politicians aren't doing anything about it. Um, they're not even mentioning it. I'm sorry, Democrat, Republican, they're not even talking about it. I, I wrote a series of letters to Nancy Pelosi a year ago. I was on the History Channel, and I did this show about the end of time, and, and I kept writing her and saying, how come, you know, I thought the Democrats cared about us, and why aren't you saying, telling people to prepare for what's happening? And her assistant wrote me back this little snarky letter, you know, you're just trying to cause a panic. And I was like, I'm not trying to cause a panic. I'm trying to, like, tell people what's going on, you know, and you guys have a responsibility to do it, and they're not. And, and, and so I'm telling you right now, is, is we're moving into some seriously dangerous period. We're moving into a seriously dangerous period of time, but it's not a bad thing. This is where I differ from the gloom and doom people. I think it's a great thing. I think it's, it, this, if, we don't, if we don't stop what we're doing, and change our ways now, forced on us or voluntary, we're going to be extinct in a hundred years. I don't think we can make it. And I think that this is almost a godsend.